So I figured I might as well do the whole thing since designer is part of substance and you most likely have either purchased a substance live subscription are currently running a trial or have bought substance indie from the steam store. Uh, obviously, depending on your, um, um, how should I say it, uh, preference, you may have a perk or not have a particular perk. Uh, the one, of course, I'm talking about is the Substance Live. Right, so uh, let's actually get, get out right to the point. And the point is that I want to introduce Substance Designer as well as Painter as part of your texturing solution. Reason for that is that these both have kind of like a, they sort of, have an identical purpose but the approach and the workflow is 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 very different um now designer and you know the the more you specialize and the more you learn both of these you will quickly realize that there are things only substance painter can do and there are things that only substance designer can do also substance designer comes with something a lot more the reason it actually still exists and it's not directly integrated in painter at least that's my belief is because designer is a lot more specialized and it's kind of the uh, the backbone of what painter can do okay so without designer painter wouldn't really be able to do a lot in terms of its uh, um, texturing capabilities but you know what instead of just talking about it let's just launch both of these uh, software packages um, so I've launched both of them and we can compare them side by side and clearly designer is a much faster loading piece of software now first of all when we look over here you've got you know some basic stuff much similar to uh, painter of course you've got in painter here the tutorials this should look familiar all right that hopefully this is familiar now i'm going to click start painting so that i can so that i get my layers uh, my layer stack enabled here uh and here i'm not going to do anything okay since i don't want to create well actually i will i will create something now of course you've got the learn bit here where you can go to the tutorials i highly recommend you do that but uh let's just click create and I will create a new substance and let's just uh, well let's just click OK for now I don't want to go over what the whole story is here now clearly you will immediately notice that there is a vast difference in the focus of the um, of the main application as you can see here the biggest port by default in the view is your graph the you know the two sort of like equally sized ports if I just reset the, uh, the layout here uh, there we go. The two equally sized ports are sort of a secondary in terms of the nature that they perform. In other words, you've got your 3D view and you've got your particular, you know, 2D, um, 2D view or whatever it is you're viewing. Now, it's different from Substance Painter in that if you take a look at, the, uh, at this um, view right here, you will notice that it's much the same. However, you know, it's, it's taken twice the space. Reason being is that the main purpose of Painter is to actually paint. Uh, you can paint over, like I already said before, you got loads of different options when it comes to painting. Uh, whereas in Designer, you are really more, uh, it's more akin to programming and shader coding than uh, actual painting. Now, why would you ever even want to do this, you ask, right? I mean, you've got your own layer stack over here on the left. Let me just delete this one. And uh, let's just say, first of all, obviously the best choice you could make in terms of time saving is just to go into substance live and download a bunch of substances all right so it's it's definitely useful just click it here and uh you know download whatever it is you need generally speaking for example in our case we might need a sand material because we'll be playing where on the beach so let's just press uh look for sand and as you can see we've got loads of different sand you got rocky and sandy ground you've got sandstones uh, a, a yellow classic like this is always a classic always then you've got the stony sand soil the windswept the windswept wet sand as you can see there's low even the ripples ripples etc look when it comes to um when it comes to uh, substances you will get no better than the stuff from the uh, source from substance source and I, I like i said i highly recommend if you can find whatever it is you're looking for you can definitely get it and it will not look identical to anyone else's because all the parameters available to you all of these are highly customizable like i already mentioned and you once once we get into design you will really see that this will be a, a boon to you since um well these are the guys in algorithmic that are making this so they expose a lot of parameters available to you to, uh, to play with all right, uh, so let's just let's just go ahead and close this for now and uh, run a parallel, so to speak. Now, the main kind of material composition 
method in, um, in Painter is using smart materials. Over here, as you can see, these smart materials, just like in the previous video where I showed you the hull damage, um, they're essentially groups of, um, well, groups of, you know, kind of like stacks. Uh, by the way, the cool thing is here that I believe you can propagate across all channels. Where's the thing? Yeah, there we go. So you can cross, you can sanction across all texture sets. That's pretty cool, by the way. I forgot to show that last time, but essentially it allows you, if you have many texture sets, is to you know do this. Uh, obviously, uh, if you don't like it, you could obviously after that just delete it, right? Uh, in terms of here, just delete the instance. It will not be applied. Point is that it gives you like the central point of, um, you know, the central point of editing, which allows you to, you know, let's say paint the whole thing. Point is that. This is a kind of like a, this is basically a collection of layers. This is a group. This is a folder of layers, right? And you can make your own and definitely export them. And they do have a rudimentary, actually a fairly powerful amount of customization, especially if you click over here, a lot of these, uh, so to speak, uh, um, you know, things have their own little uh, random type bits. As you can see here, you got loads of different parameters, like balances, contrast, etc. You got uh, you know your your secondary textures here the way they blend you can actually play around with your uh, different uh, curvatures like if, if you can see that we've got normalized uh, values here so so really it's it's a really great um, tool in, when it comes to customizing and if you really know what you're doing you will not miss out on on much when it comes to uh, generating textures okay not to mention that you know if, if, if you really get you know screwed up or can't figure out how to do something you just grab your pointer or your pen or whatever it is you're using and just start you know painting on top of whatever channel that is you know that you want to be painting on however as you can see here there's definitely uh, some merit in having uh, customized uh, parameters which update in real time now the problem with this is that once you export from painter since it only exports textures in, the, in other words bitmaps you will not get the same functionality in um, in let's say Unreal Engine 4. So whatever I paint over here is my final result. And you might think, well, well, how is that a big deal, right? Since most likely this will presumably be imported from Eng from Unreal Engine 4, all the files will already be in Unreal Engine 4, uh, aka if you want to change something, just you know send it to Painter and change it by hand and then you'll be fine, right? It will be hot reloaded in UE4 and you can just check it back in into your version control. Now that is of course a very very valid way of working and that's exactly what you'd be doing for stuff like in this case characters like this would be probably a character or maybe even a prop. However, here's an here's a scenario for you. Imagine you have a first person shooter and you have a barrel or let's say a door or let's say a wall even, right? And you want to use the same wall because the surface itself is just a square. You want to use the same wall in many different levels in order to save yourself some time. And let's just say it's a brick wall, right? That's the standard, the standard wall um, example when it comes to a textures is the brick wall because it's a great uh, pattern, right? It's very functional. A lot of people might use it. Um, now the brick wall itself, you can obviously probably find something bricky here, I believe. Yeah, there's there's bricks here, so you could just say, well, this is my mask over here, so I can just you know dump this over here on the on one of the uh, fill layers, and there you go, I've got I got, I got my mask. Yes, you will be able to perform that. However, that's only for one single uh, uh, wall. If you had let's say ten different types of walls, in other words, a damaged wall, uh, an old wall, uh, I don't know, walls with blood splatter on them, all sorts of different stuff. The same, it's the same wall, but the textures required for the same wall are vastly um, differentiated between each other. Meaning that you, you might have to paint the, cell, the same wall 10 times, even with these rudimentary uh, controls here that you can just, let's say I'm going to adjust the, the, the rust level, the grunge level, and there's all these filters over here. You can definitely achieve what it is you're looking for. However, it's not real time and you might end up regretting it. Obviously, as your project scales up, the more of a time saver the, your initial dump of time in designer will actually be paying out. Um, so obviously in our case, we don't really need designer because realistically we only have three assets, right? We've got the, the worm, we've got the terrain, in other words, the beach, 
and we've got the, the, the net, which nobody will realistically even see since it's going to be sideways and nobody's going to be seeing it. It's going to be basically flat for the, for the players, uh, for the player viewer. Um, however, there are. I really want to go over this because there's definitely, I, I want to showcase why would you want to do this. Uh, since if we take a look here at regular materials, I'm going to delete this. Uh, if we take a look at the regular materials, um, let's just say I use aluminium. Okay, now this is, as you remember, any material, well, any material created by painter in painter is a fill layer, essentially speaking, right? Now, there's also other materials, such as in this case, and you will notice that it doesn't have any, absolutely zero, in fact, uh, uh, you know, effect stacks. It, it has no effects. It, has, does, it doesn't have an effect stack. Now, you could achieve something similar, such as this aluminum insulator with an effect stack, right? You could just say, well, I'm going to add an effect and let's just say, well, we're going to create some kind of um, filter, right? And this filter will somehow interact with a different mask and maybe we're using some different anchor points, we can actually get it. And realistically speaking, probably you would, um, but, you know, it will be fairly a fairly roundabout way and it won't be very, very well scalable and it won't be truly random, really. Now, in this case, as you can see, this is a very simple material, one that we create that was created in Painter most likely, be, just by creating a fill layer and just saving it as a as a material. Uh, and yeah, you should you, sh you should remember that this is also you know a very accurate representation of what an aluminium in a, in real world would look like. So exactly these values in red, green, and blue in terms of these, right? Obviously, you don't have you, they can be uh, not normalized, but whatever point is that this is an accurate real life physically based representation of aluminium now that we have that out of the way let's click on the other one and enable it let's take a look at what exactly we have here so um now this is obviously something like probably for a space station or something that would be you know for a satellite or something i don't know why who created this but the reason i'm pointing you towards this material is because it's this here it says it's a substance material mode Right? This is in a substance material mode. What does that mean? It means that this particular asset was created in designer and exported as a self-contained package. Uh, well, either, an, either, either as a self-contained package, which could, which could be read by every application with the appropriate plugin, such as UE4, Unity, etc., in the form of uh, an SBA, SBSAR, which is, I think, something, release, whatever. Uh, but um, between Painter and Designer, you could actually be using a .sbs file. Now, if you can look over here on this right side, look at, we've got different stuff. Let's say, look at these parameters. Now, ignore the channel mappings here, since these are essentially, uh, you know, these are configurable anywhere. So I'm going to uh, drop them down. Of course, you can actually have even a mask with that. So you can use a particular channel for a mask. Notice that it's not the same as, let's say, just adding a mask. Not to, not to, that's not to say that I could add a mask. Of course I can. And I can add the mask and I can paint on top of this. That's why Painter is powerful. The reason I'm showing you this is because I have so much more options here when it comes to uh, my the generation of this, of this map, since it's not really painted. It, that there isn't such a material in real life, okay? It, it, like a uniform material. Like you can find gold, iron aluminium, cobalt, titanium, all that stuff, you can find it in nature. However, this is man-made and, and as such, it has to be created by some combination of different materials. Obviously, this is not entirely aluminium. This probably is some kind of, I don't know, plastic or something. I don't know what this is, but it's definitely not a uniform material. And as such, it's not a real, it's not a real uh, basic material, okay? Not a base material. And therefore, it requires a certain amount of finesse in order to get it to work. And as you can see here, you've got all your different sliders, how rough a particular object is, how much, it, what's the roughness border when it comes to these things right over here, uh, how, how metallic this object is. This could be completely plastic, dielectric in other words, all right? Uh, or you could change the tile. Let's say uh, the, the pattern tile, and let's say you want to tile it more, have it more of a, Jesus, there's going to be quite a, let's tile it three times. There we go. Um, let's say you, you don't want to have it as full as intense in terms of folds. So we can take a look over here. The folds are not as intense right now. It's just, uh, let's max it out again. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Um, perhaps I need to increase the roughness a little bit. Well, it's not entirely visible how the folds intensity works. 
But let's say maybe we're, well this is normalized, so there's no really point maxing it. What about grid intensity? Yeah, you can see it. Like you see these small little uh, squares over here, kind of like a like a grid. See them? Uh, this is essentially what it is. I believe it also adds. No, it's hard. Very, it's very hard to see. Like you really have to look close. So this is kind of like a rudimentary um, um, parameter. However, you've got your technical parameters after that as well. You can look at the normal. For example, if we go ahead and uh, just put, position this like so and just increase the intensity of the normal and probably increase the height range, you will see that this creates the illusion of a much, much more, um, um, like the, like these triangles are as if they're sticking out, right? You can also change the position of the normal, obviously. But you've got these parameters over here, not not only the height, uh, but these parameters over here didn't just pop in, you know, out of themselves. They, they they didn't just exist. And you cannot create something like this in Painter because this is a this is not it, it doesn't have the capability or the functionality to actually create something like this, right? Not to mention it can change the the seed for you know different patterns. So at the moment you just click, you can obviously you can just put your own. Um, you know, you could put your own um, seed over here, let's say, I don't know, there's a seed, right? Or there's a seed, right? Obviously, if you have a particularly favorite number, you could use that. But the point is that it's most of the case, it's just truly random. Then you've got your color. You can change different colors. Now, this is not much, much, much more different from what you can do in the layer itself. Obviously, with aluminium pure, you could do the same. But uh, there's definitely different, um, how should I say it, things that you can do. Not to mention you can map this to, let's say you, there's your normal. And remember, I was playing around with the normal intensity. And this is quite ridiculous in terms of intensity. But I've enabled it. And as you can see, it does it does this whole uh, maybe like a space suit. Or you could even use this for, for clothes, really. Nobody's really going to find out if you adjust the roughness properly. And, well, uh, roughness properly, my bad. Something like that. And it's you know not as metallic something like this, and maybe you can have like your roughness border maxed out. As you can see, the the roughness in the borders changes depending on how what the setting is. Now this is a very fancy way of working. Imagine if you could do that in the engine, and you can't. You can really because you can import this. You grab this, import it in the engine using the Substance plugin. It will work. You can have you'll have the exact same parameters. You'll have the exact same options of working with this. Not to mention that um, it can output. Like you, I can now put three or four or five or 10 or 50 versions of the same texture like that. I could just snap my fingers and just export this right now or send it to, a, to Unreal, of course, if I had it running in the background. Uh, the point is that it's a very fast way of working and fairly procedural, right? I didn't have to paint any of this stuff. I didn't have to create anything. It's just there. It's just already done. Now I can paint whatever whatever it is I want on top of it. Let's say I could grab uh, some stamps, some alphas or something. Let's say I want to imagine if this is some kind of a, you know, uh, like a flight, a flight program or whatever, you, you add a particular logo or one of the alphas that you have collected over the years or just recently started, you know, uh, amassing. And, but uh, as you can see, there's definitely uh, loads of possibility here. Of course, I could mask some of this stuff out as well in order to create a visor. For example, in this case, I'd probably select to just create a visor. Um, the point is that it's a very powerful tool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what it is that actually happens here. So uh, I'm going to click on designer and we can actually take a look at really quick at what the differences are before we kind of dive in. Probably we'll dive in in the next video because I, I really wanted to to superposition these th these two two things, you know, softwares and see where what the differences are. Now, I'm going to go ahead and without you, you know, telling you what's happening here, I'm just going to grab a material. Uh, where's my PBR materials? And let's just say I'm going to use ah, they don't have the same fucking material, do they? Maybe we should use Material Cherry. Let's just say we're going to use Material Cherry, or uh, let's say let's say we want to make a cardboard box, and there's our cardboard, right? So I'm going to drag this over into the um, into the graph over here, and you can ignore for now what is happening, and uh, I will simply add this to the outputs over here, and there's our little cardboard uh, box. However. Uh, just like the if we exported this into a painter this will be you know completely legit because you could just take a look at your parameters and you've got the same thing you got loads more parameters in fact right you can uh, you can change the shift of the hue let's say I make this a little bit more green or just change the contrast of this stuff uh, how bright it is etc with luminosity uh, let's say it's something like this a really green box okay 
Um, so as you can see, there's definitely, obviously you don't need the hue shift. You can just select a particular color if you really want to. Uh, let's say you could say that and maybe use the AO spreading so you could see something like this over here. All right, uh, let me just increase the, uh, let me just increase the resolution to 4K. And it will be recomputed. And as you can see, there's our 4K. Now, there's one more thing, by the way, here. You can you can dynamically re uh, resize textures. Not only in, like you can do that in Painter, obviously, but you can do that dynamically in the application itself. Actually, you could even do it in runtime, but this is the ridiculous. Uh, runtime essentially means at essentially means doing something during while the game is running, okay? So uh, if you did something like this and you just said, all right, I, I want to recompute everything and just upscale, downscale everything. Uh, yeah, no, this will take, this will be popping, texture popping galore. However, imagine if you could hook this up to, let's say, oh, some players have really poor performance on my game, maybe because they don't have a fast enough computer, which most likely involves not having enough memory or having a very slow clock speed on their on their processors, either on the CPUs or the uh, GPU, uh, you know, components respectively. Maybe, just maybe, I should lower down the resolution. And by the way, this is what a MIP map is called. In other words, a MIP map is something that kind of like lowers in resolution the further far away, the further you go away from it. Kind of like a level of detail, but for 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 two D textures. Now, the engine itself does a good job at mip mapping. In other words, it, it will downscale stuff. Not only the meshes themselves will it reduce the polygons, but it will also downscale the textures. And you can do that in engine. You don't have to use this particular thing. However, you can get much better quality results if you let's say have a particular pattern, and once that is downscaled, let's say or upscaled. Okay, so you can be playing with the uh, 2K textures, you could upscale them to 8K, for example, when, you know, after, let's say, three or four years, whenever, you know, average computer um, memory uh, gets, let's say, more than 16 gigs in terms of uh, GPU, and you got loads of stuff on your monitor, you can just upscale it to 8K, you can even give your, uh, your uh, players the option to do so. So, runtime editing is, is awesome, especially because it allows you to, I don't know, if you, if you have a, a well, I don't know. <laughs> Like, I don't know, you don't even have to, like a lot of stuff you don't have to do because if you set them up in here, you won't have to set them up in the engine. Now, this actually is very resembling, is a lot more closer to programming than, let's say, uh, Substance Painter is. And the, the fact that it uses a graph, uh, well, I mean, that's not programming, but the concept is the same, okay? I'm not going to teach you C++ in this video series since... That is that is just ridiculously long, and in my in my really really in my opinion, it's a waste of time when it comes to programming, uh, at least as a indie developer, since blueprints are like they have the same format, which is shared across many different applications that use graphical um, you know uh, programming such as this in terms of a graph, and it, they also like you can decompile you can you can decompile uh, sorry you can compile blueprints basically you can translate them into c++ generally speaking now when the engine came out at first yeah there was a huge delay you could say you could say yeah dude i'm gonna program this by hand i'm gonna get much faster and much better optimized game and this day and age blueprints are just as good as c++ if not probably better since they kind of eliminate some of the basic mistakes that can happen especially if you program like if you program three or four or ten hours straight, for example, and you just start making ridiculous mistakes, only having to go look back for them in your code. Whereas blueprints are generally like these these squares, these components that are very self-sufficient, very optimized. Now, as you can see, if we take a look over here, just focus on this thing. Let's take a look at what we've got. First of all, you've got your base color, which if you remember correctly, I'm going to delete these, of course, which should make a lot of sense. There's our base color. I'm going to double click it. And now that I've deleted every single, um, you know, every single um, channel here that we've used, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got no metallic, no roughness information, no normal. This is just a color. This is just a picture on top of something that is, is clearly very reflective and very flat, very polished. Now, if I go ahead and hook up, let's just say in this case, the normal, uh, I just want to do this by hand as in this case, the normal, I will immediately get some of that uh, data. However, the, you know, the flashing is the, this reflective value will still be pretty much the same. And this is our, of course, our normal map. Now, obviously you will notice that it's much more different from our 
color map that the uh, albedo here is, the base color, which is essentially color information. There's no shading, none of that jazz. It has to be calculated in real time. And the normal app will supply that. As you can see, this is the, these are the bumps here and there that we have. Uh, now, as you can see, this also has a height. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the height. And this will immediately should technically create a height. However, you need to adjust it in the material. Don't don't worry about worry yourself about this too much, at least for now. Since there's our height, there's some folds in our in our um, uh, object in our box here. Um, then you've got the roughness, which should be fairly self-explanatory by now. You should know what roughness is. Notice that these, like this, is fairly rough. And we can take a look at this map and just shows which bits are rougher than the others. Okay. Uh, but of course, in order to get the full picture, we need the metallic channel, and there's our metallic channel, and this sh this should be compiled fairly quickly. Over here, as you can see, this is not metallic at all, fully non-metallic. Therefore, it's completely black in color. Now, it's fairly reflective yet. Maybe it's wet, maybe whatever. So you you might want to adjust some of these parameters, especially over here. If we take a look, there's definitely loads of things you can do. Let's say you can reduce the contrast. Maybe change the luminosity, lower it a little bit more, or maybe increase it more, right? Whatever. Um, maybe there's a little bit, okay, there's a little bit too much. However, notice that it's taken quite a long time to figure this out, right? I mean, it's, it's taken a serious amount of time to redo a lot of these, um, you know, recompute a lot of these, uh, um, how should I say it, um, sort of nodes, right? Uh, I'm currently having an issue getting a proper image here off of this thing. Yeah, let's just say something like this is what we'll be looking at. Uh, how, so what exactly is this? How does this work? Let's let's take a look at this. Uh, um, let's take a look at what this is. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, so clearly a lot of work has been done to get this thing working. Uh, like, of course, this is kind of like a, a little bit of an overkill in terms of what's it got. And as you can see, it's got loads of different stuff such as it's even got glossiness specular, like it has outputs which we do not use. And even in this application, in this graph, we do not have an ambient inclusion. So let's just say we might add an AO. Uh, let's just say output. And I'm going to say this is a, uh, you know, like a, it has to be a grayscale. Uh, well, is this grayscale? Well, okay, let's just leave it the way it is. It could take something else, but we're going to use a ambient inclusion. And I'm not even going to bother naming this or anything since, you know, it's the right channel anyway. So I'm going to grab this and I will add it to the ambient occlusion. And this should sort of finish up our calculation here. And uh, this is our cardboard box. Yeah, you could maybe argue that this is a little bit too reflective, uh, but whatever. Um, and let's let's enable let's enable our scene. For example, let's take our environment and edit the environment. Uh, let's just make it visible and we're currently in, a, in the fields. So if we take a look at these environments over here, um, where did you go? Where did these things go? Oh, 3D view, there it is. Uh, let's, well, abandoned sanatorium. Yeah, we're all lunatics here, so might as well. So there's our abandoned sanatorium. As you can see, now it's being calculated differently since the light intensity is also different. So it's fairly close to an actual cardboard box, I'd say. Um, like, you know, you could play around with the settings, for example, here with, uh, oops, uh, with the, um, you know, with the height, for example, you want to go ooh, very high, very high, like this. Or maybe you could just leave it as it is right now. Uh, obviously, this, this is, by the way, creating a parallax occlusion type deal. Uh, I believe it was coming in from... Uh, no, from here, from materials. Oops. Uh, yes, was it here? What did we use? Uh, there was something here that said that you could change basically the way you wanted to use with either parallax occlusion or with tessellation, which is essentially tiling this thing. However, I just can't find it. I really don't change it at all since parallax occlusion is usually what you want anyway. Uh, but whatever, it doesn't really matter since, like I said, it's it's mainly useful for... I really don't know what it's useful for most of the time. You want, like tessellation, I don't think it's, it's even going to work in Unreal Engine 4. So um, you'd probably be better off just leaving it as it is. So I'm curious to where the fuck did it go. I'm pretty sure there was this... Uh, oh, it might have been over here somewhere. No, 
Now the graph settings. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, find them on your, own, on your own if you're that interested. But what I wanted to say is that these channels over here are representative of what you're gonna get once you export this and maybe import it into Painter or maybe import it into, into Unreal Engine 4. All of these channels will not only be you know, outputting uh, textures, but also you're gonna have all of these parameters. So let's say, obviously you won't be exporting this since we're not really doing anything in this graph, we're just dumping a material. So let's say you exported this material, you're gonna get these settings over here in uh, in uh, Unreal Engine 4. You can even enable disable, but these are not, uh, these are kind of like, um, you know, what you need and what you don't need, right? So if we disable base color, there won't be any base color. So, you know, or is there? For some reason this is uh, disabled. Oh, I need to save this. Okay, never mind. Uh, a point is that uh, there's this, this is clearly a very high, very advanced um, sort of uh, material, and if you can see, it's got loads of input parameters, which, which which you can just you know change on your own if you really want to drill down and dive down over here. Uh, but uh, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff here. It's kind of un like it's almost unreadable. There's really no comments, nothing, dude. That is just brutal. And as you can see, some of these things they just come from noises, etc. You wouldn't really know. What the hell happened with gradient map and then it goes into a transformation with what settings oh, it tiles it a bunch um so yeah guys uh that's that's what a like a really complex complicated material would look like uh, in designer obviously i wouldn't recommend you do any of that because you might want to be changing whatever it is you have i think this is just a showcase uh but the reality is that whenever you output something out of here it, it gives you a lot of Options now in this case this particular material unfortunately doesn't really have um, I'm just gonna get rid of these channels here doesn't really have much. Oh, there's advanced parameters. Does it have anything? Yeah, so you look for example, you can increase the tearing. I don't even know you could do that Let it re Recompute and now it's getting torn a lot. So these are basically two materials stacked on top of one another, right? Uh, since there's one material, which is the torn uh, cardboard, and then there's the other material, which is the cardboard itself. And you can imagine painting this, right? Now, we've already, I've already showed you the, you know, the whole idea here with Painter where you got the smart material mask and you could do some fancy stuff with the anchors, but it's nowhere near close as what you can do with this thing. Not to mention you can actually have animations, different functions. You can even program shaders in this. As you can see here, there's MDL resources. Like, you can go really granular with designer something that is not available for painter now there's always a bonus of having high level stuff but sometimes you want to drill down to the low level and see how it works so you can make your own shit not to mention you can actually export and create filters generators etc etc smart masks like all of these masks for example they're all made in uh, in uh, in substance designer right all of these filters uh i think we do have some filters doing yeah all these filters over here they're the same as in substance designer plus substance designer has more right now i think you can actually even make your own in there uh so definitely definitely loads of different uh, uh options when it comes to uh creating your own stuff so uh this is kind of imagine if this was the storefront and this is your factory yeah you can make a lot of stuff in a shop but sometimes you might want to just uh, you know pop into the factory and request something be done um Notice, however, that it's definitely slow. Like you wouldn't want to be using this in, run, in runtime for a particularly nasty reason, and that is if we take a look at our timings, this needs to be recomputed, I believe. Why is this so fast? Why is this ridiculously fast? What's wrong? I'm not getting the readout here. Let's just reduce some scales or something. Oh, okay, so that's that's our, these are real timings. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it's about a second before the thing gets uh, calculated, and that's definitely an issue in game because within a second you're gonna miss 60 frames. Well, assuming your thing runs properly, obviously you got different. Like let's say film. I don't even know this had a film. Oh wow, damn man! See, see how many different options you've got just for a freaking cardboard box. You can even enable how many creases you want, how much like of a crease, you know, in terms of creases, how much crease that there is. And damn, is this very well done. Well, mostly well done. Well, it's pretty well done. Um, there are some issues here, obviously, but uh, nothing too major, you know? Uh, so, um, yeah, guys, there's that, you can even make it dirty. Jesus Christ. So, I, I haven't played with this material, obviously, before, but look at how much stuff you can do with just one box, not to mention that this is all 
exported textures. Not to mention that if you did this in Unreal Engine 4, these textures would be automatically updated and dumped into the material nodes, uh, in, into the material instances themselves inside Unreal Engine 4. You could do all of that in real time, or you can do that all of that within the Unreal Engine 4, um, so to speak, uh, uh, level creation while you're while you're obviously making the game level, etc. It, it's very very robust, and I highly recommend you. You know, at least get the trial version of this. Or if you're if you have Substance Live, just go ahead and download it right now, uh, because uh, there's definitely loads of different um, you know uh, availabilities, and and really you can do a lot of stuff with with Designer. Um, but uh, for in order to continue this whole story here, I just wanted to finish on top of a particular setting, and that is the spacebar button. Now, the spacebar button is much like. Uh, <clears throat> Maya's uh, hotbox in that it gives you you know access to pretty much everything that is available within painter So let's go ahead and take a look at something. Let's say we want some filters and we want bevel Well, if I start writing bevel, I'm gonna get oops Assuming I write properly. There's my bevel uh, Let's see what I maybe this is too obvious to find. Let's just get grab something that let's convert to sRGB Convert to sRGB. There it is um, So you don't really need this stuff here because as long as you know their names, you can just search for them, you know, over here. Not to mention if, if you had a particular node, let's say something like, uh, let's say I have a uniform color and just dump it over here real quick. It's only taken, you know, very, very fast to make it. Um, it's for 4K anyway. If I got uniform color, there's definitely... Um, can I just view, view them outputs, please? What's wrong with you? Yeah, there's definitely something wrong here not now since this should be uh, should be something I believe I do not need the ambient occlusion in this case. Yeah, this should be definitely changing its color. Okay. All right, we need a normal map. Generally, you don't really need a normal map to get the color, but whatever. Uh, so. Um, as you can see, you can uh, you can just uh, play around with these, or you can just let's say change to a sphere, or uh, let's say to a, uh, a cylinder, right? So you got loads of different meshes. Obviously, you can import your own meshes, which will, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Let's use a rounded cube for now. Uh, but geez, this normal map threw me off. I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, Never mind then. We'll we'll talk about this in the next video. Whatever it is, what I was about to talk. To. Oh yeah, the freaking space bar. Jesus, sorry. Uh, yeah, over here you have all of the atomic nodes, and you can really make pretty much everything that you need with all of these. Okay, if you learn what every one of these nodes work, uh, do and how they work, and how to edit them, all you need after that is just some inputs. And the cool bit in Designer is that yeah, you can take in so, you know vectored graphics, the standard vector graphics as SVG files. You can take PSD files. So if you have Photoshop, you can import stuff here and directly import them. You can link them. Just whatever it is you're doing, go ahead, edit them in Photoshop, put put them back here. Boom. Not to mention you got this pretty much the same things as you have anywhere else. Let's just grab a. I'll uh, just grab some noise. Some noise, let's just say blue noise. I mean, it's kind of overkill in terms of noise, but whatever. So let's just say, um, what, what do we have here? Well, do we have the levels? Yeah, we do have levels, cool. So that's the same thing we have in um, Photoshop and in Painter and in a lot of basically any 2D texturing or processing application, you have levels. Do you have histograms? Yes, we do. We got loads of these, by the way. Histogram shift, select, whatever, right? Uh, then you've got your, let's say, hue, let's say hue, saturation, and, uh, and uh, luminosity. So lightness in this case. Uh, so as you can see, we've got all these options here, just like a filter in Photoshop would be. That's why, by the way, I said in the beginning, Photoshop would be very useful. Uh, all of these are obviously have their own little random seeds. You can even change the random seed for the entire graph uh, if you so desire. So I'm just changing these things. As you can see the uh, random generation method, like obviously the seed changes here, you get different results. Um, as you can see over here, you can uh, you know do the same thing. Uh, sorry, you can do the same thing on a per uh, per square base. In other words, per node basis. But there's definitely loads of things that you should know. There's a bitmap. 
obviously you can use a resource let's say well we don't have any resources so forget about it but um i don't know there's a normal here for example this obviously is a normal normal conversion but you do of course you can just dump it over here for example right and there's your normal it's the same result of course uh, but you can get a normal color and play around with that color as well if you so desire uh, what else we've got here transformation 2d should be fairly self-explanatory allows you to rotate stuff so let's just say i double click this uh, add this over here and boom i can just rotate this thing okay or maybe i could just uh, move it up and down right or tile it in a, in some particular way um like obviously in this case i might double click to just go to 10 right and 10 and there's our value 10 you can go higher than that right obviously this takes very little since uh, blue noise is you know these are fast fast noise also white noise fast uh, in terms of filters you've got different cool things such as difference curvature let's say you want edge detect all it takes is an input of a grayscale it gives you an output of a grayscale so a lot of these nodes obviously these are the ones you'll be learning uh, a lot more than the basic ones since the basic ones are non-changeable okay these are non-negotiable nodes this is this is the default hard-coded stuff that it's presented to you. These are your building blocks, your rigs, your Legos, call them whatever you want. This is as granular and as basic as you can go. Well, you will go. Uh, obviously, you can go really granular when you go into MLD and go into these functions over here. I, ha I have no idea what MDL does. Uh, I mean, I know what MDL does. I haven't used it since it's simply not for games, since game engines actually need... Um, uh, you know uh, light to be uh, you need to be told how to calculate light whereas this thing is supposedly not as far as i remember mdl is just not telling it's like a separation of a shader okay it doesn't tell the engine how to calculate the light you have to do that manually etc so whatever the point is that there's definitely a um, perspective here but i believe this is mainly for studios with, which are making animations or you know animated movies or whatever um, but then again, you've got loads of different stuff. You can go into your functions here and let's say these are just basic functions, but you can make your own, obviously. I don't think you can even drop and drag and drop them here. Yeah, they have to be over here in the function menu. Uh, but we're going to go over these. Actually, no, we're not going to go over these. You're going to look them up, uh, you know, on the algorithmic website because I really don't intend to teach programming or programming basics in designer despite that being exactly what this is right these are you know uh logical statements i kind of i'm, I'm kind of saving this for unreal engine 4 since well since that that's where all that's where we're going to need the logic now of course you can use that logic over here but um for our little small project this is definitely not required and i will in the next i think one or maybe two videos at most i will introduce you to you know this whole concept here what are, what are we looking at you, you should be fairly uh, familiar with this with this assuming you have been playing with painter for a while but uh, you know we'll, we'll give you a little tour a little overview of what we have here probably reorganize a little bit this stuff since maybe some of these things are a little bit too big uh, and my graph is just basically half a screen it's a pity there's no way to maximize it and you know just like uh, in, in other, any other application or maybe maybe I'd, I'll take a look and see maybe there is a, a hotkey for that to maximize a particular window uh, i think there must be there's no way it, well maybe there isn't well maybe there is in the future when you're watching this maybe there is one so uh you won't run into the same problems as i will uh, but the point is that we're only go gonna scavenge like scathe the surface okay lick the surface of a gigantic iceberg which of course is in the form of designer uh, and one final thing of course you don't need it uh like 100 percent. you don't you don't need it um for you know in order to get something done you can just use painter right the the reason this is powerful is because of the cardboard example that i've shown that i've shown you it allows you to not only reuse materials that are created by other people for example if you go to substance share there's about 900 materials created by other people available for free to just download and they're pretty high quality materials that is of course if you like if you stack that with the fact that you have substance share you might not even have you might not even need to um open designer right i mean it, it'll help to play around with it just to know oh this you know how how something works but at the end of the day if you need a sand asap pronto very well done high quality etc without you making mistakes just go ahead and download it right there's there's definitely useful since unlike uh, assets such as zombies and uh, I don't know monsters etc which are clearly very easily distinguishable 
if you've been you've bought some asset off of let's say unity store or uh, unreal engine store or whatever since you can buy assets off of anywhere anywhere including fbx files and even rigs and animations um but these things are random meaning that really even if you buy it i mean your configuration is going to be different from the configuration of the next guy uh all you have to do really is just to change the random seed you're going to get a vastly different result of what someone else did uh with the exact same uh substance so definitely uh, consider the uh, either the investment into substance or go into substance share and just uh, obviously it's a website and just download a bunch of substances play around them apply them build a build a library of these things and uh, you will be flourishing in terms of your assets since texturing sometimes may be fairly time consuming uh, of course depending on the level of detail that you want to go to now in this video even though there's plenty of sand materials not in this video in this next few videos even though there's plenty of sand materials and which are probably way better done than I could ever do it uh, do it myself since I'm not I'm not that big into this uh, stuff like I mean I know the basics and I've played around with this and I can do a couple of a couple of things but I'm definitely no specialist well I'm not a specialist in anything but if the if I have a weak spot that's probably designer and materials in general I'm not a big uh, uh, fan of materials and I, I do make mistakes in a lot of them really and uh, I, I like the uh, programming aspect of it where you just, you know, just keep stacking things, eventually have this huge graph without, without even realizing it. Uh, but sometimes I just prefer to, you know, not bother since for me, this is kind of like the, it's kind of like the boring bit where, well, this is stone. I need to make a stone. Do I really have to make a stone? Why not just download a picture of stone, just slap it onto the, uh, slap it on top of the mesh. Uh, but now that you can get, like, I mean, a picture on top of a mesh would not look very good. But now that you have materials, definitely, guys, definitely consider either or, right? Uh, obviously, you could do both, which is what I do, right? Sometimes I cannot find something that I need. Sometimes I need to edit or change a particular substance. And, you know, that's mostly what I use designer for. However, we will do a brand new scratch material in the video after the next one since the next video will be overviewing this then we will texture our terrain which in this case would be let's say i want to link this uh to a 3d mesh already exported the terrain just for ease of use i'm just going to dump it over here and i will just view outputs in 3d view and there's our 3d mesh so this is remember this is our beach this is the beach we'll be playing our um uh, volleyball on so the players will be like this sort of kind of right so we need to texture this accordingly obviously you can just apply a sand or let's just say if you know if really really going to preview this uh let's go ahead and grab uh there's no sand here but let's just grab oh there is oh it's concrete well let's just say we'll grab some concrete or gravel let's say our worms will be playing on a gravel and all i gotta do is well, assuming, wow, this is a slow, well, we're at 4K, which is not a surprise. So 4K is slow, which is usually why you would be, you'd be working at a thousand, let's say. Um, um, so let's take a look at the gravel before we go into uh, just the picture here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, gravel is is quite, um, yeah, let's just, let's just not look at it. It just it's just depressing to look at you know uh so th there's our gravel and as you can see it does a really good job and if we go ahead and play with our parameters um over here if we go ahead and play play with our parameters you can get a lot of stuff done right layers different height positions the you know, spreading etc normal intensity pretty much the same parameters that are available to you in the other one uh but uh sometimes you might get something that you don't like or in this case maybe i don't like um uh, you know i need more you know, height in my information let's just say something like this um so whatever this is there's something here so i got some stuff here yeah there's, there's definitely issues now at this point this is parallax occlusion at its finest <laughs> uh but uh, yeah probably it's outdated probably got some outdated stuff or maybe some weird way but maybe i just maxed this out too much um but um yeah you can you can really get a lot of good stuff notice that this exact same of course material can be used in painter i can just dump it into painter or in unreal engine 4 or anything anywhere okay so that's been that guys i'm sorry i kind of i i really wanted to drive uh home the point that um well, i hope i already did that uh, so that you understand that you know what this is for and how it works 
because uh, I was perplexed when I saw a painter and then I saw a designer. I was like, what? The, why would you need a designer? Um, but yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next time when we go over the menu, the UI, in other words, some of the uh, basic uh, components, such as this, for example, what are these? Um, and then in the video after that, we will actually paint, make this into sand. How cool is that? All right. Okay, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.